Streptococcus pyogenes. It is a gram-positive coccus. The word streptococcus is made up of two words. The first one is strap, which means chains that leads to its chain-like growth pattern or arrangement. And the second word that is coccus, it means spherical or round, as you can see in this picture. This bacterium is spherical. And the second word is pyogenes. It is also made up of two words. The first one is pyo, which means pus. And the second one, genes or genes, that means forming. So this bacterium forms the generations of pus and Streptococcus pyogenes belongs to the family Streptococcaceae. Assalamu alaikum lovely students. Today's video is about Strep pyogenes. We are about to tackle it in a way that will make you say, I've got this. But before getting started, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Let's dive deeper into the video. Strep pyogenes is a catalase negative bacterium. For those of you guys who are not familiar with what is catalase and what's catalase test, let me tell you. Catalase is an enzyme released by certain bacteria and is not released by some other bacteria. So strep pyogenes is the one who is responsible for not releasing that. What does that enzyme do? We'll touch upon that in the diagnosis section. Streptococcus is further classified based on serology, the Nasprey classification, hemolysis, and biochemistry. We'll talk about that in a moment, but at the moment, I want to cover these points. Streptococcus pyogenes is beta hemolytic bacterium and is base heat trace insensitive, and it belongs to Lance Field Group A classification. If you see GAS gas, it is Group A strep bacteria, that's strep pyogenes, and this bacterium is pyrolidonyl arylamidase positive. This PYR test is a qualitative procedure for determining the ability of strep to enzymatically hydrolyze the L pyrolidonyl beta naphthalamide PYR. A positive PYR test allows for identification of group A strep, for example, strep pyogenes, and group D strep, for example, enterococcus. Lecture outline, we have completed the introduction. Now we are going to talk about the classification, morphology, habitat, transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention in detail. And at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Classification of streptococcus. It is further classified based on serology, Lansfield. It was derived by Rebecca Lansfield and also based on hemolysis and biochemistry. On the basis of hemolysis, strep bacteria are further classified into alpha hemolytic, beta hemolytic, and gamma hemolytic bacteria. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are responsible for partial hemolysis, beta is responsible for complete hemolysis, and gamma hemolytic bacteria are responsible for no hemolysis. Alpha hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on optogen sensitivity into strep pneumoniae and strep viridans. Beta hemolytic bacteria forms a clear zone around their colonies due to complete lysis or hemolysis of blood. Beta hemolysis is due to the production of enzymes, the hemolysins called streptolysin O and streptolysin S. The yellow one is the colony, white is the clay zone formed around the colony because of complete hemolysis that beta hemolytic bacteria are responsible for and red one is the petri dish, the blood agar. And beta hemolytic bacteria are further classified based on basitracin sensitivity. Basitracin is an antibiotic and the bacteria that are sensitive to it are termed as group A, for example strep pyogenes and the ones that are resistant to it are termed as group B, for example strep agalactiae. As you can see there that group A strep pyogenes is sensitive to basitracin. That's why there's a clear zone or the bacteria has been killed on that disc. And on the right side, you can see that the group B beta hemolytic bacteria, for example, strep agalactia, is resistant to basitracin. That's why there's no bacteria killed. Morphology. As the word coccus means spherical, so this bacteria is spherical in shape. It is arranged in chains and its diameter varies from 0.6 to 1 micrometer. And it is purple in color. Why? Because it is gram positive bacterium. Structure. This bacterium has thick peptidoglycan cell wall, it is encapsulated and non Non-motile. Why is it non-motile? Because it has got no motility apparatus like a flagella and it is non-spore forming bacterium. As you can see there, the strep pyogenes is forming chains and it has the chain-like growth pattern. It is spherical. Its diameter varies from 0.6 to 1 micrometer habitat. Strep pyogenes lives in the nasal pharynx of human beings and there are no animal reservoirs. Transmission occurs by respiratory droplets because the primary disease the spectrum responsible for causing is pharyngitis. And pharyngitis always spreads from one person to other via respiratory droplets via coughing or sneezing. And the second way the spectrum 
bacterium can be transmitted to other people is by hand or skin contact if there is impetigo or any other kind of skin condition. Pathogenesis, let's talk about the virulence factors first. The first two virulence factors are related to each other. The first one is M protein. It is responsible for inhibiting the C3B opsonization. If you remember from my strap pneumonia video, in that video I talked about the complete opsonization process. The C3B tags the bacterial pathogen in the human body when bacteria enters the human body. What happens is that spleen then sends specialized macrophages to the area where that bacterial pathogen is being tagged with C3B to phagocytose that pathogen. When the M protein inhibits that, so there will be no tagging and bacterial pathogen will be happy and will be free to cause infections in the human body. M protein versus antibodies. What happens when antibodies confuses the protein M with certain human body proteins. It is responsible for causing rheumatic fever via molecular mimicry. You might be now confused what is molecular mimicry. Let's talk about that first. As you can see on the left side is this strap bacteria. It has got these epitopes, the yellow colored streptococcal M proteins on it surface. And on the right side you can see the heart. It has also got its epitope, the cardiac myosin protein. It's kind of green, sea blue color. I'm not quite sure about this color. But both the proteins are triangular. But the difference is that one is in yellow color and the other one is kind of blue, sea green colored. Proteins of heart are bigger as compared to strap proteins. But what happens? Immune cells confuse that. The T cell confuses the strapped M protein with cardiac myosin protein. Why? Because it only looks at the shape. It does not look at the color and the size of these proteins. So because of that confusion, it kills both. Along with strap M protein, the cardiac myosin proteins are killed. This is molecular mimicry. M protein is M protein, so you can memorize it with M. Antibodies versus M protein is responsible for causing rheumatic fever by a molecular mimicry attacking cardiac myosin proteins. And the second one is hyaluronic acid capsule. It inhibits phagocytosis. The end result of opsonization is phagocytosis. Cytosis. This is where the second virulence factor connects with the first one. And the third one is protein F. This is fibronectin binding protein and it promotes epithelial cell attachment. It has all to do with F. That protein F, which is fibronectin binding protein, so fibronectin starting with F fuses starts with F. So fibronectin fuses to epithelial cells. Epithelial has got two letters T at together they sound th. To replace it, we've got F. Instead of saying epithelial, you would say epithelial cells. So protein F fibronectin fuses to epithelial cells. Like that, your brain will make connections and you'll memorize that. Clinical findings, you can memorize them with the mnemonic in apps. Normally, apps spell with A, P, P, S, but I've written an extra E in it in order to take all these clinical findings in a mnemonic. I've written these clinical findings in order of importance, but you can also arrange it in accordance with the mnemonic. The first one is pharyngitis. This is the most common disease caused by the strap pyogenes, and this can lead to rheumatic fever if left untreated. The rheumatic fever will be acute rheumatic fever, then other diseases like prostaptococcal glomerulonephritis, impetigo, necrotizing fasciitis, erysipelas, and scarlet fever. Let's talk about pharyngitis. It is inflamed and erythematous throat. Exudative material may be present on tonsils and may not be present, and it is responsible for causing a dysphagia pain during swallowing. Fever, chills, lymphadenopathy, emesis, nausea and abdominal pain will also occur. Cephalalgia that is headache and myalgia that is muscular pain along with amelias will occur in pharyngitis. If it is left untreated, it will cause rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever occurs after two to four days of infection. It is responsible for causing infection in the three layers of heart and this infection is termed as pancarditis and in the three layers the infections will be myocarditis, endocarditis and pericarditis. Carditis. And it is also responsible for causing erythema marginatum, which is a skin rash, and it spreads from trunk to limbs, as you can see on this limb. Rheumatic fever also has migratory polyarthritis and subcutaneous nodules that are visible on hands. And there's one really important condition that is sent in ham chorea. It involves jerky, uncontrollable, and purposeless movements of hands, arm, shoulder, face, legs, and trunk. It is believed that this infection also affects certain ganglia and brain, which are responsible for causing 
causing this condition. Next one is post-treptococcal glomerulonephritis. It often follows pharyngitis or impetigo. When you see a patient with elevated ASO, T, streptolysin, otitis and reduced C3 levels in their lab, you should come to the result that this is the strep pyogenes infection. In that condition, there's deposition of immune complexes in glomerular basement membrane. There will be symptoms like hematuria, oliguria, hypertension, edema, and there's lumpy bumpy appearance on immunofluorescence microscopy. Next condition is impetigo. It is honey crusted lesions formed on an erythematous base, as you can see in this picture, and these lesions are typically non bullous. The next condition is erysipelas. These are inflamed patches and plaques, as you can see in these pictures. This condition involves the epidermis and cutaneous lymphatics. And you know what? They are well demarcated. There is a clear, crisp line between the normal skin and the skin affected with erysipelas. There may be lymphogenitis or may not be. And these plaques or pages are raised, as you can see. Next condition caused by strep pyogenes is scarlet fever. Pharyngitis is accompanied by fever and flushing. The characteristic feature of scarlet fever is strawberry tongue, as you can see there. This is the tongue having dots like strawberry. That's why it is termed as strawberry tongue. There is circumoral halo around the mouth, but the tongue is strawberry tongue. And there is sandpaper-like rash on palms and soles. As you can see, this kid has it on his trunk but it spreads to palms and soles and there's a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction to erythrogenic toxin type a lab diagnosis will normally figure out the condition with the symptoms but will definitely need certain samples like throat swab gram stain will reveal that this bacterium is gram positive because it is purple colored and microscopy will reveal that it is very cool in shape and its diameter varies from 0.6 to 1 micrometer as you can see there it is spherical in shape, forming chains. You might not see it in purple color in this slide, but in reality, it is purple colored. Next up is the catalase test. What happens in that test is that the enzyme released by bacteria converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, and then oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. As we know that strep pyogenes has no catalase enzyme, so what will happen that this process will not occur. Hydrogen peroxide will not be converted into water and oxygen and no bubbles will be formed. So this is a negative test for strep pyogenes. Culture. Culture on blood agar will reveal beta hemolysis and the colonies of strep pyogenes appear after 24 hours of incubation. They are basitracin sensitive, they are smooth, have moist surface and clear margins and are white grayish in color. As you can see the culture there. It is white grayish in color, they are smooth and are basitracin sensitive. Treatment Diseases caused by strep pyogenes are treated with penicillin. And skin conditions are treated with topical antibiotic that is mupirocin. And macrolides can help where the person is resistant to penicillin. And first or second generation cephalosporins are also responsible for treating. Prevention Strep pyogenes infections can be controlled with prompt treatment and by maintaining a healthy lifestyle and practicing good hygiene. All right, guys let's review everything really quick the organism is streptococcus pyogenes and it's responsible for causing pharyngitis if left untreated or lead to acute rheumatic fever, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, impetigo, necrotizing fasciitis, erysipelas, and scarlet fever. It is transmitted via respiratory droplets or hand and skin contact. Humans are the only hosts and the primary location is the nasal pharynx and they are diagnosed with gram stain, microscopy, culture, and catalase test. And they are treated with penicillin, mupirocin, macrolide, and first and second generation cephalosporins. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. You've learned something. Hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. Assalamualaikum. Thank you.